Hey, nerds, is the Axiom from Wally -E the fastest ship in the universe? It's definitely not. But anyway, welcome to Gamblin's Run, episode 13, The Axiom. Now, if you're new here, this is a series where I try to work out the speeds of various spaceships and how long it would take them to get to Andromeda Galaxy, putting them in a big old race together. And uh, this is the current leaderboard and the disqualification list. If you are interested, please do take note of one thing that I'm about to do. I'm really sorry, you guys. I am moving Destiny from Stargate Universe to the disqualified list. That's gonna make some of you very unhappy, I'm really sorry, but to be honest, you're all still mad at me about Heart of Gold anyway, so whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just not happy with how I calculated it. I think it was just a little bit too hand wavy. I don't feel like the information that we have is strong enough in, in comparison to what we have for the other ships. So. It just feels like kind of cheating a little bit. So for now, I have shifted it over. However, do remember when we get to 25 ships on the list, I did say that I was going to do a Gambans Run Heavy series. And in that series, I'm going to get so detailed and so nerdy. It's going to be so technical and boring for so many people. But some of you are gonna love it, so we're gonna do it anyway. So maybe we can revisit Destiny then. And in the meantime, I will rewatch all of the Stargate Universe episodes uh, and see if I can pick up any hints along the way. But to today's episode, we are talking about the Axiom from Wally, -E, the cutest robot movie you've ever seen. Now, if you haven't seen Wally, -E, the Axiom is the jewel of the B and L fleet. It is on its 700th anniversary of its five-year cruise. Uh, so the ships were built to take humanity on a cruise amongst the stars while the Wally -E robots clean up the trash pile that is Earth. Basically make it more like habitable so humans can then return to it. Unfortunately, the cleanup job didn't go to plan, so the Axiom has never been recalled to Earth and it has been cruising space for 700 years. So the things that we do know, like we said, it's been in space for 700 years, but where has it been? Now there is a claim on the fandom site that when Wally sees the Axiom, it's located behind the Horsehead Nebula. I'm sorry to be harsh about this, but that's talking complete trash. That's just BS, like, I'm sorry. I don't know who wrote that and I don't know why they think it's the Horsehead Nebula because it looks nothing like it, but I have evidence and support for this. The Blu-ray DVD has an extras to it where it's it's um, captaining the Axiom uh, is, is, is the extras little kind of, you know, just one of those things that they used to do. You get like a little extra scene and it's kind of a like a crew promo tape thing. And so it's got a lot of detail about the Axiom in it. And within that, it talks about how its original destination was the Kuiper Belt. And it says, where fragments of our protoplanetary gas cloud are waiting to be explored. And when they show that, when they say that line, they show the image of the Axiom in the cloud, which is the exact same image that is used in the movie when Wally arrives at the Axiom, which means that the Axiom the entire time has been in the Kuiper Belt. Now, we know that it's got two speeds, right? So the Axiom has a cruising speed that is sub light speed, but it also has an FTL drive, and that means that's what will allow it to get back to Earth. So it doesn't have to do a journey um, and then return journey on the same path. The five year cruise can have been to the Kuiper Belt and then they have an FTL jump back to Earth whenever they're recalled to say Earth is ready and habitable again. And in that instance, it uses hyperspace and in the movie, it gets there in 12 seconds of movie time. I did use a stopwatch. But I don't know if we can actually use movie time as a speed calculation. So if we talk about the sub light speed, we then have to try to figure out what its actual journey time was. Now, like we said, the original destination was the Kuiper Belt and we know that it stayed out there for 700 years because it was never recalled. What we don't know is was it a five year cruise to get to the Kuiper Belt or was it a shorter time to get there and then time in the Kuiper Belt? Also, it's a cruise. so. Were they stopping off at other planets along the way? The thing is, we don't actually know. So there's no way that we can calculate 
what the cruising speed actually was for it to get to the Kuiper belt. And so for that reason, unfortunately, and I hate to do it to Wally, but the Axiom is dq would what, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna what are we gonna do? I'm really not happy about this. I wanted to make this work. You've no idea. I sat there. You've no idea how long I sat there for trying to actually figure out where it was by looking at the maps in the movie. <laughs> but I'm confident that my assessment is correct. So I just cannot find a way to make this work. If you can find a way, I'm all ears. Please do tell me if I've missed something in the movie, if there's something else in any of the extras, if anyone has like the Blu-ray DVD and you know that, then let me know. If you wrote the movie, give us an answer. <laughs> anyway, that is it for the Axiom, unfortunately. I don't like disqualifying ships, you guys. I really don't like doing it, but let's pick one. Oh my God, will we finally get something that you've been asking for for a long time? Because I feel like people get a bit impatient with me about certain ships. Okay. Uh, oh no, this doesn't have an actual name of a ship on it. <gasps> okay, I'm not going to tell you what this is. I can't believe I put that in there. That's a category of ship, but it's not a specific ship. And I don't know if those ships have different categories. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm not going to spoil it for you. It'll be another time. We'll come back. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. The Russ and Auntie from The Expanse. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm actually very excited about this one. Uh, people keep asking me to do The Expanse. I really struggle with um, trying to think about how best to do a Science of the Expanse series because the problem is it's so detailed. Like there's so much, there is so much to talk about. So how can I do it? in a way, like, I just, you know, it's like, you need to talk about every single episode, you know, I, or I don't know, maybe it's kind of, it's not for this series. This is, this is, this is things that, something I've been struggling with for ages and I just haven't figured it out yet. So anyway, uh, next ship will be the Rosinante from The Expanse. And I'm sure we're all very happy about that. So you guys get, you can stop asking about it. <laughs> okay. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, yeah, can't wait. Cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, I, I really need to come up with an ending for these videos. I don't have like an outro. Hmm. Stay nerdy. Bye. That was weak.